How you doing everyone? This is Matthew Satva from Direct Dreadnought, your Dreadnought PS4 replay guy. This is the second installment in the How to Beat the Best series with How to Join the Best. Today we're going to take a look at squatting up and forming elite teams and the advantage that such teams have over those of us that like to just squat up casually and enjoy the game while getting somewhat an advantage over players who go solo. Now I tend to go solo most of the time but I do squat up with a lot of players and a lot of teams and most of that is casual and sometimes it's a little more than casual and it usually nets some very positive results. When you're going at it alone in Dreadnought, it can be very difficult until you level your ships or until you've gained a lot of experience. So right out of the gate, squatting up with other players and friends has tremendous benefits in the game and will help you achieve better stats and better game results. However, there are some infamous teams out there that do a great job of kicking butt in Dreadnought. I'm going to focus on the Space Apes or Scroats crew as an example as they were the ones I focused on in the first episode of How to Beat the Best and they are also the ones that most notably take squatting up to the next level. What inspired me to add on to the How to Beat the Best series was a quick pickup game where I joined Scroats crew just for a few games. Now this is pretty common for me. I will migrate from one squad to the other just to be social and to try to be neutral in any uh, dreadnought politics that may exist in the game. But uh, I do notice when I join Scroat Space Ape team that they really do play much harder than other teams do and take the game much more serious. I joined one game which unfortunately I lost the footage but I will be including footage from three other games and they had a very easy plan in which Scroat would be an artillery cruiser and he would be powered up with a weapon booster pulse from a destroyer which would guard his flanks and then I was the dreadnought who would take the brunt of the damage in front and I used armor booster pulse to keep Scroat alive longer he would use his specific build to maximize his Jupiter Arms artillery damage. And then we had Seba as a tactical cruiser, and he was just keeping everyone alive. This was a very, very simple plan, beautifully executed, with players who were used to playing with each other and know each other's tactics like the back of their hand, and it was a complete slaughter. Even though I did very little in the match, I picked up something like a 7-0. Seba got, I believe, a 4-1 because everyone was targeting him. Val, who usually destroys entire teams on his own, decided that he would take it easy and guard us, and he walked out with, I believe, an 8-1, and Scroat got a whopping 23-0. It was a complete slaughter, and the other team just didn't have a chance. Now, if you fought Scroat and the Space Apes before, you know what I'm talking about. They easily raffle stomp and face roll teams, especially teams of randoms. And those of us in the know who consider ourselves elite on the PS4 server are very familiar with Scroat and his crew. Most of the time, most players whine and complain and attribute their victories to overpowered Corvettes or them exploiting the game. But I hate to break it to you, Scroat and his guys can beat up anyone in any ship and the reason why is not because they're exploiting anything in the game it's because they have excellent teamwork and they know their ships weaknesses and the strengths of their modules. So if you enjoy casual play and you don't want to put that much work into Dreadnought this video probably isn't for you. But I have a feeling most of my subscribers have put a lot of work into Dreadnought and would like to see some beneficial results and gain an edge over the random players that are currently in the PS4 server. The Space Apes aren't the only crew in town and there are some very successful teams out there. What sets them above the rest of the teams is that other teams are just a bunch of good players playing together. Scroat's team actually goes in, thinks about strategies, 
picks ships and modules that complements each other and have known each other for a long time so there isn't so much bravado and competition and they are more willing to sacrifice their own score for victory and to elevate their team's success rate and the other members of their squad. This sets them apart from other teams. I get invited to a lot of squads with aspirations of emulating Scro and his crew and becoming the next big thing, but it usually winds up being just a bunch of really good players playing together and having a good time. Now that's fine, that's most of the kind of play that I'm into, but if you want to get competitive in Dreadnought, this is the kind of stuff what Scroat and the Space Apes actually do that will get you ahead when compared to other players. That's not to say that Scroat and his gang don't have fun. Actually, they have a lot of fun, usually at our expense. That's what brings us to my first pointer that I noticed about their coordination and teamwork, is they have a familiarity with each other because they play together so much and they like to have fun. So everything they do, although it is competitive, is to bring joy to their lives and to push the envelope even further. The guys in Scroat's crew can literally predict each other's movements, what kind of play style they have, and they're familiar with each other's builds. This is very hard to beat. This kind of coordination, teamwork, and planning is something that's very lacking with other squads and teams, and this is the first thing that sets them up for victory. In this first video I have going on in the background, this was their version of casual play in which they wanted to take all tactical cruisers and spam every sort of tactical cruiser module they can. This included using multiple tractor beam pods to drag people into nuclear mine traps, or four or five tactical cruisers using Tesla beams to shake and destroy the frame rate of a poor dreadnought, which you'll see at the end, just for snaps and giggles. Now, at first this seems unfair, but please note if you bully on any ship with five of a different type of ship, they're probably going to lose just because they're outnumbered five to one. But how they get into these situations is coordination, knowing the map, knowing the combat situation, and knowing each other. Sure, there are a lot of really great players and a lot of really great squads out there, and if you come across them, even good players, we get in trouble because we're outnumbered and these are experienced and good players. But Scro and his crew take it to the next level where they know exactly what's going on inside of their squad, no one's out on their own, they're all coordinating, and they all are familiar with each other's play style and builds. First victory was good enough for them, but then after winning so much, they literally got bored and decided to give themselves even more challenge. And by doing so, became much better players and accidentally or even intentionally found really good combinations that aren't necessarily exploits in the game. Because Scroat's team is so familiar with each other and like to have fun and play together so often, you don't see the same animosity or competition that you see in other teams. They're always about trying to win and trying to have a good time doing it while keeping their gameplay fresh, unique, and new. We had a lot of fun in this match, and we got to try a lot of new combinations and learn a lot about the game, even though we've all been playing for over a year now. Well, let's enjoy the rest of this replay, and then we'll move on to the next segment, where we use a bunch of Corvettes and Destroyers to counter a Corvette rush on Red Sands. You heard the captain. The second thing that makes Scroat and the Space Apes so strong is not just their familiarity with each other and their own builds, but their familiarity with other players, gameplay in general, and the Dreadnought meta. 
They all have secondary builds for their ships. Most players don't even use secondary builds, but they have secondary builds ready for just about any situation. This is in sharp contrast to me, by the way, as usually I'm a lone wolf player or I'm playing casually, and so my primary builds tend to be jack of all trades, generic all situational builds, and then I have specific secondary builds that usually counter advanced squads, specifically Scrope for some builds. I can think of off the top of my head three secondary builds that I built just for fighting Scrote and the Space Apes. But they use their secondary builds for any unique situation they might encounter, and they plan for those situations ahead of time. They also have intimate knowledge of most of the best players and how the best players use their ships and what strategies they employ, and have thought of counters ahead of time. In this replay, we were experiencing a Corvette rush, and right out of the gates, as soon as Scroat and his team noticed at the beginning of the match that there was a lot of Corvettes on the enemy team, they picked their Corvette secondary builds that had anti-Corvette modules, such as Disruptor Pulse or Stasis Ammo. And on top of all that, Scroat usually keeps mental dossiers on the more popular or well-known players. The Space Apes have been playing the game for a long time and have an excellent grasp on the current meta, old meta, and all sorts of tactics and strategies that players will employ. If you find yourself the victim or catch the ire of this team, one good tactic is to switch your ships up. Sometimes players think that Scrote and his crew are picking on you when it's actually your specific ship class or tactic. That's another strength that these guys have, is that they basically have all the ships in the game, or at least several ships, the ones that they like to play, and several other backups, and each of their ships have two builds. So if you find yourself being attacked by Scrote and his crew a lot, chances are they're focusing on the type of ship you're flying or the type of tactic you're employing. Sometimes switching to another ship class or using different tactics will draw their focus onto other players and give you a break. In this particular replay, me, Val, and Scrote, especially Scrote, went Corvette hunting and picked up several kills apiece, and because we were chasing Corvettes, the enemy team really couldn't get a beat on us, and it was a pretty much fair fight between the random players on our team and the remaining players on the other team. After we picked up a whole bunch of Corvette kills, those players stopped using Corvettes and so we stopped chasing them, but the damage had already been done. So we had a substantial lead, and by the time any of us went down or we needed to change our tactics or strategy, we had pretty much won the game and there was very little that the other team could do. Well, let's finish watching some of the highlights of this replay, and then we'll get on to part three, the pain train. Bearing on the enemy ship. Our command ship has been eliminated. Activated. Launching hammer. That's how you get the job done. So, Scroat and his crew are known for keeping it fresh, trying new things, having fun, being familiar with each other and with the enemy, as well as working up excellent counter tactics and being familiar with their foes. The third big thing that this replay will show is that they have an extreme focus on new kinds of strategies and advanced tactics, while also getting away from some sort of weird societal or social hierarchy. So Val came up with this idea, it's called the Pain Train, and this was a lot of fun. A lot of people associate Scrote with being the quote-unquote leader of the Space Apes, but actually the way they operate, there is really no leader. They all work together, they all listen to each other, and they're all suggesting really good advanced tactics. 
In this one, Val came up with an idea working around one of his Gora builds in which he has three Goras coming in using Retaliator along with Backup Generator so that the more damage a particular Gora takes, the more firepower they can push out. And all three of these Goras came in in a direct straight line like a train with Val having short range weaponry, Scrote having mid range weaponry, and I got the caboose with long range missile modules. On top of all that, Persistent Flame was in an Octa providing much needed healing benefits, and of course, whenever he came under attack, the pain train turned around and delivered a knockout blow to whoever was so bold. This was a great match. I could not believe how well it went, and this strategy was thought of well ahead of time, and it was mentally rehearsed by all three of us. We came in, hit the enemy hard, continued on, caught the enemy off guard, cleaned the entire team out, and while they were respawning, we were already right on top of them. Anytime the first Gora took heavy damage, the Octa was there to heal it, and it activated its energy generator to get Retaliator online and absorb a tremendous amount of damage while delivering all sorts of nasty torpedoes at short range. Meanwhile, me and Scrote were putting all power to weapons because we weren't getting focused fire. Anytime the enemy team decided to switch targets because they couldn't kill Val, it was rinse and repeat, and then we would activate our energy generators and, and the other squad members would put all their energy into firepower. This was an incredible amount of damage coming through. Very few ships could last more than a couple of seconds, and no one on the enemy team really knew what to do with themselves. It put the enemy in such disarray, it was so well coordinated that they really had no idea what to do and were totally caught off balance. Now, it's not this particular strategy that I want to draw attention to. It's the fact that these guys plan their strategies ahead of time. And this isn't just goofing around like in part one where they're coming up with fresh new tactics or experimenting with modules. They're using tried and true techniques, practicing it, going over it, and making it a very hard-hitting strategy. And this isn't a one-trick pony. Scrot and the Space Apes have several such strategies ready to go, and they can spring any of them on you at any moment. And that's the difference between Scrote and his squad compared to other squads of players who are really just really good players playing together, having a good time, but not coordinating and not putting in the extra effort. This was a very short match and a very short replay. We had ridiculous numbers. I believe all of us were in the mid-teens and zero deaths, and I believe Persistent Flame had one death because they kept trying to focus him down, which is probably what I would have done in the same situation. But this was amazing, and we all did well, and all I had to do was follow along with the practice strategy that Scroton Val had already set in motion. So, in closing, how can you play more like these elite squads and be less of a victim when you're playing Dreadnought? Well, first you have to find a group of players to play with regularly. And I don't mean casual play when you're having a good time. You can do that as well. But find three other players and play consistently and regularly until you can predict their kind of builds what they're more likely to do in a match, and what kind of ideas might be bouncing around in their head at any one given moment when you're playing. Secondly, prepare. Have a secondary build. Have a strategy to counter enemy strategies. Remember what some of the other players you come up against are using. What kind of ships do they like? What kind of modules? And what are some common strategies in the meta? You have heal balls, spider knots, you have all sorts of assault blink warp strategies, corvette rushes. Try to keep an eye on all the different play styles out there and already have a plan in motion. And then third, after you get familiar with both your friends and your frenemies, and you become familiar with the meta and get a lot of practice, coordination, and teamwork together, 
then you start with your next level strategies. Put together plans that work for you. Use the ships at this point that you're familiar with, except this time incorporate them with the ships that your other squad members are using and practice advanced strategies and tactics together to get the edge on the enemy. This is why Scrote and his team are so strong. Now, some people give the Space Apes a bad rap because like many other squads and players, they do a little bit of snap talking and they're known for trolling other players. But to be honest, they don't do much more trolling than anyone else does and a lot of times they're just talking smack because people are talking smack about them. I'm not saying they're saints or anything, but I don't really think they deserve the bad rap that they get. So what can you do to get an elite squad together like Scrote or any of the other elite squads out there? Well, it may not be as easy as it used to be, but let's face it, the PS4 server is still going strong and there's a lot of ways that you can find players to play with. You can start with your friends, you can also visit the bulletin boards such as Nuclear Inferno's Dread Chat, or Utopia Pan Colonial, or the Dreadnought Elite Club. You can also feel free to use my YouTube channel. I know a couple of my subscribers have been saying some of their usual friends and players have been dropping out, so go ahead and use the comments section on one of my videos or in my channel to find other players to play together and then you guys can start practicing and eventually get as elite as Scrote and the Space Apes. Well, I think that about wraps up the How to Join the Best series. In the last installment in the How to Beat the Best series, we're going to have How to Survive the Best, where I give you some of my personal pointers and tactics to survive when you're on your own against elite squad gameplay. Well, that's it from me for now, and I'll see you soon in Sinley Bay.